Hey bookworms, my name is Lindsay. I am the book vlogger and today I'm going to be reviewing Shadow Cry by Jenna Burtonshaw. Shadow Cry is a young adult fantasy novel about a girl named Kate who lives in a world ravaged by war and corrupt power. In this country, there are soldiers called wardens, and these wardens go from town to town collecting people and forcing them into a slavery where they help with the war effort. When Kate was five, they came to her town and took her parents and left her in the care of her uncle. It's all a little bit more complicated than that, but you learn as the story goes on. I'm not going to give more than that. When the story begins, Kate's much older. She's been living with her uncle, and the warden show up within about five pages, but this time they're looking for something specific. From this moment on, the book basically becomes a game of catch and release. There really isn't any downtime, and I think the entire book actually spans about three days. And let me tell you, a lot can happen in three days, except for downtime. There really isn't any downtime. The characters are always going, 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 and I think in those three days, or this entire book, the character, the main character only eats maybe one time, and just thinking about that makes me hungry. On the protagonist meter, I'm going to rate Kate um, pretty much up there, uh, maybe a hair or two shorter than Deuce and Kerrigan. Kate is special. Her name's lame, but I really like her. She has this fierce loyalty to her family that you I don't think I've ever seen in a character before. She's not the kind of person who says, well, you know, I'll die if I try to help them, so I'm just going to let it go and live with it. There's never a moment in this book where she has any doubt that she has to do something. It's her duty to look after her family. At this point in the book, she has zero fighting skills. When it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat, she's basically a DID. However, she is a magical badass. <laughs> Untouchable when it comes to skill. That magical ability, that skill of hers doesn't protect her in her world, but I wouldn't go against her in any other realm. No way. I'm hoping that in future books, she might learn how to take that ability of hers and use it to protect herself in her current world, in the world of the living. If she can do that, if she can use it to protect herself and become a badass in her world and a badass in other realms, then I think that would actually put her above Deuce and Kerrigan. Predictability in this book is so-so. It's not really the kind of story that you can predict where it's going. It's not exactly a cut and dry mystery type story. But there are two situations where um, prophecies come up. Not exactly prophecies, they're more like visions and superstitions, but they come up and they do give you a, an idea of where how the story will end. I hate prophecies in books. Authors like to put them in and try to play them off like they're nothing, like they're going to fool us, but ultimately the story always ends as the prophecy predicted. This book is really no exception to that rule, save for a few small details. That being said, the prophecies are small and not a lot of time is spent on them. That allowed me to pretty much ignore one and the other one, while I did ignore it, allowed for a really kind of cool badass moment where Kate was able to kind of throw a verbal punch at the enemy, which was really cool. Gore is also so-so in this book, and I actually think that might be too strong of a rating. People do die, and there are moments where people are stabbed, but it doesn't really get much worse, and there's no decapitation, she doesn't really get into detailed um, goriness, so you're pretty safe there. Sex? None. There isn't any romance in this book whatsoever. There's no kissing, no flirting, no lingering looks, nothing. After all, we are talking about only three days here. There is definitely possibility for romance in the future. There was certainly something there between a couple of the characters, but they never had a chance to play it out. This book has an amazing amount of imagination in it, and it reads like butter. Imagine hot butter melting over a slice of toast and absorbing into its depths. That's how this book reads. And because of that, it earns the Cuties Pick Award. You can learn more about Cuties Picks by going to my website, link below. There you can click on the icon in the right-hand panel. It will take you to a page that explains what the Cuties Pick is. And you'll also get to see the Cuties Picks of the past, although at this point there has only been one other. To give you an idea of how awesome the imagination is in this book and how smoothly it reads, I'm going to read to you a paragraph right from it. I only hope that I can do it justice. He ran his thumb across a deep scar on the palm of his right hand, a curling brand made by searing hot iron into flesh. The same brand that had once brought him back to life from the furthest reaches of death. After twelve years, it was still as raw as the moment it was made, 
and sometimes he thought he could still see a few sparks of fire smoldering inside the wound, burrowing down a little deeper year after year. So that's the end of part one of my review for Shadow Cry by Jenna Burtonshaw. If you haven't read the book, this is pretty much the end for you. Um, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to watch the book trailer or the unboxing of Shadow Cry or any other videos that I have, um, just click this button here and it will send you to the end of the video where you'll find links for those. Everyone else, follow me in the spoiler room. Spoiler alert. To avoid spoilers, leave now. Spoilers activated. Welcome to the spoiler room. If you're new to the spoiler room, all you really have to know is that here we discuss the book in more detail. I am going to spoil the book, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, then you should probably leave now. There is so much I loved about this book. I loved when Kate connected to the veil and Frost screw up her arms and over her body. That was so cool. Come on, that is cool. I loved that her eyes changed colors as her magic grew. That was really neat and such a great visual. And I love that as the story progressed, the veil and the land of the living kind of started to connect a little bit more. Like she could see the spirits when she wasn't even trying. I mean, that's just really great development. The story of the Bowenmen was really unique and really awesome. I loved hearing about them. My only wish is that I could have seen the Bowenmen and the Night Train and all their glory back the way they were supposed to be. It was all just such a cool concept and I think it made Albion really, really unique. I like Silas. He was complicated and very intense and very interesting. He was difficult to figure out. Sometimes he was very cruel and insulting, but then other times, you know, he was always there to have his hand out to help Kate up. There was always little things that he was doing that suggested that he was good. I wonder if something is going to happen between Kate and Silas that makes them more than just simply friends. I know that something's gonna happen between Kate and Edgar. That's pretty obvious. And that's fine. I like Edgar, he's a good kid. But there was just something very intimate going on when Kate and Silas would share memories. You know, his hands on her temples, they're looking into each other's eyes. It's just a very intimate situation. He will understand Kate far more than Edgar ever could. And now that Kate's blood is inside him, there is definitely a connection going on between them. As soon as that moment happened, I noticed a shift in him, a change in him. He suddenly became softer towards her and almost a little bit protective. I can honestly say that I would like to see more happen between Silas and Kate as far as the relationship goes. Edgar is great and I like him, but at this point I just only have eyes for Silas. He's just interesting and he's intense. There isn't any real indication that the author intends to make more out of their relationship. I think if anything, um, she just intends for them to be friends. In that case, if this book ever became a movie, I think Paul Bettany would be a fantastic cast for Silas. But if a relationship did form between the characters, then Paul Bettany wouldn't, wouldn't work because he's kind of getting too far up there in years to be dating a younger woman, young girl rather. So that's my review of Shadow Cry by Jenna Burtonshaw. Great book. I very much recommend it. If you're looking for something medieval, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Great imagination. Very interesting and very unique book. Please don't forget to thumbs up and comment below and until, oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing is very important. <laughs> and until next time, happy reading.